Hot on the heels of iOS 18's official release comes this, iOS 18.1 beta 4 and it comes with a whole lot of goodies for instance did you know apple's working on a new feature that lets you wirelessly restore an iphone 16 with a nearby device there's also handy suggestions in the type to siri interface and wouldn't it be cool if you had your print status in the dynamic island yeah it's got that and a whole lot more check it out right now thanks for watching nine to five mac be sure to thumbs up click the subscribe button and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos so yeah, basically Apple ain't wasting no time. They're pedal to the metal here. We have iOS 18.1 beta four, and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff. It's built 22B504 5G. And as you can see there, you get the release notes, iOS 18.1 beta gives you an early preview, especially focused on Apple intelligence, of course, with the new Siri interface and all that jazz. But let's talk about some changes compared to the last version. So you get a reconfigured connectivity panel and control center. So this is what it looks like now for all your connectivity options like Wi-Fi, AirDrop, Bluetooth, personal hotspot, airplane mode, etc. If you resize that, you basically have two sizes. You can even either go there and then when you tap on it like that, it expands out to this new look. Now, here's how it used to look previously and here's how that connectivity panel looks in iOS 18. So which one do you think looks better? I don't really think it's a huge change but I guess it's basically just Apple putting more focus on those four really popular settings there that you see. Have you ever heard of Print Center? Perhaps not, but it's been in iOS seemingly forever. Basically, you open up the app switcher after you print, you see details about your print job. Well, Print Center is not dead, it's still alive, but now you see your Print Center status right there in the dynamic island with the progress of the jobs as well. That is a really, really nice feature. And I can see myself using that all the time. Now, a lot of people have asked me, Jeff, how do I support the channel? How do I support you? Well, I, first of all, appreciate you even asking, but number one, subscribe, of course. Thumbs up really does make a huge difference though. So if you like this video, please do that. It helps other people find it. They know it's legit. We also have memberships as well, if you wanna check that out. Now, Powerbeats Pro 2 are Apple's upcoming headphones that should be shipping next year with the all new design and new sensors. We, this isn't like a new thing. We talked about this a, a week ago or so on 9 to 5 Mac, but what is new is not the colors, but the name of the color. So this was revealed in the code. You have matte black, desert white, wild purple, fierce orange. Basically, Powerbeats Pro 2 will have a built-in heart rate sensor. That's a first, right? So it will be able to send the, user, the user's heart rate to Apple Health, and obviously you must be wearing both earbuds during workouts, but Apple also plans to use this technology in the next version of the AirPods Pro, which would be presumably AirPods Pro 3. Now in iOS 18.1 beta 4, there's also the unified picker. Now, the concept of, the, of this is not new. We've seen similar things. Apple's kind of dabbled in this in previous betas. They even have it in their document for iOS 18. But basically, the unified picker combines the emoji keyboard and the sticker drawer into one unified location, making it really easy to just select a sticker or an emoji on the whim, right? So here's iOS 18. This is how it looked. It basically separated the stickers and the emoji, but now they're all combined here. So I have stickers, I have emoji in there. And then you also notice a larger emoji keyboard. Well, not a larger keyboard, but larger emoji within the keyboard, bigger spaces as well between. And you'll notice that the frequently used in the smileys and people text have been removed here in 18.1 beta four with that unified picker. So just a little detail there. But basically here in iOS 18.1 beta four, frequently used takes up that whole little section there. Uh, so it's no longer just quarantined off to the side like that. But in addition, recently used, or I guess frequently used, that little button that looks like the nine to five Mac icon, when you press on that, nothing happens if you're already there, right? Obviously, if you go to another page like that and you tap it, it goes back to the recently used like that. But if you tap it while you're already there, nothing happens. Now look on iOS 18. You're there, you tap it again, and then it opens up that little sticker portion of the keyboard. So that's the difference there between that. You can tap it to sort of hide and show the sticker options. Speaking of stickers, there's a new sticker button that you'll notice for creating stickers. So in the upper right-hand corner of the new sticker page, you'll see a create 
new sticker button. So you tap that, it opens up your photos, and then you can select a photo to create or to turn into a sticker, uses the depth map. So you just add that, and now I have a new sticker. It's that easy, right? Super simple, super easy. And in the new beta, the sticker button has been relocated. So if I open up the uh, stickers here, you'll see that little sticker button. So it's a little bit different than what you had on the previous version of iOS and iOS 18. Same result, different location, right? Now, basically all this is doing is opening up the sticker drawer, which you find under the little plus button. So you also have fast access to Memoji and Animoji right here. You simply tap like that and there's your access to your Animoji and your Memoji stickers. Super simple, right? So you can just keep swiping over. And then earlier versions, you simply tap the plus button and tap your Memoji sticker button. Now in iOS 18.1 beta 4, RCS is enabled for the three major carriers in China, in mainland China. So those carriers include China Telecom, China Mobile, and China Unicom. So that means your conversations with Android users are gonna get that much better. You're gonna have better quality images and videos, read receipts, uh, typing indicators, all that. And if you wanna know if your carrier supports RCS, all you need to do is go into settings general about, and then tap where it says carrier, and it'll tell you the services it supports. So visible supports RCS, and Tello does not support RCS in my case. Now there's also a new type to Siri suggestion. So obviously this will require you to have Apple intelligence and Siri enabled in settings, Apple intelligence. So once you have that toggle enabled and you're provisioned, some people have trouble with that. Some say logging in and out of iCloud will help speed up the process to uh, get accepted into Apple intelligence beta. But nonetheless, once you have it enabled, now you have the type to Siri option. You just double tap the home indicator at the bottom of the screen. But now the difference here in beta four is that you get these suggestions as you type and they're really well designed. You just tap it, it automatically executes whatever suggestion it's providing. So how's the, the air quality? You tap that, it opens up. Well, actually it didn't do anything there. <laughs> That's embarrassing. All right, so let's try it again. How's the air quality today? And bam, there you go. There's your air quality. And pretty much all the suggestions work exactly the same way. You tap it, it executes so I can create a new entry in my journal. Dear diary, I really want to get to a million subscribers. Dear diary, why doesn't Apple send me the new iPhone to review? Dear, okay. You can tell when I'm like 10 minutes into a video, I'll start getting slap happy. But I wanna hear what you guys and gals have to say about type to series. Is this a feature you plan on actually using on a regular basis? Do you like the design? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. I have some thoughts, but I'll save it till later. I do, however, like the fact that you can quickly execute actions like setting alarms. And I also like it that you can use it to launch apps. Although technically, I guess using Spotlight would probably be faster. Now you also have the quick type suggestions in your keyboard or right above your keyboard as well. And you can use those along with type to Siri to build out whatever query you're building out. So I can say, what time is the sunset? And I'll just tap on tonight. The big difference with manually typing it in, you have to actually manually submit the query instead of it automatically executing. Now you'll find a new airdrop icon in the passwords app for sharing a password or pass key. So it's literally just a different glyph. And I think it better represents what it does because it's not really your sharing options. It literally is just direct airdrop functionality, just like that. Another change that you'll notice in 18.1 is the calculator history UI. So I have calculator opened up on 18 and here it is on the right side with 18.1. Let's both load up the basic calendar. And what you'll notice is when you open up the history by tapping the button in the upper left hand corner, you'll notice that the history now appears from the bottom of the screen in 18.1 beta 4. And what's interesting about this is you can swipe on a query like that to copy or delete, whereas you can't do it here because of the way it's laid out coming in from the right or left side of the screen. You can long press on both to perform various functions like delete or copy expression, but the fact that it comes in from the bottom of the screen gives you or affords you the ability to perform those swipe gestures because it's not going to actually dismiss the panel. You can also go in and edit and delete items What's interesting though, you get a delete all option on 18 where I don't see that delete all option on 18.1. So some subtle differences between the two, more or less the same, 
but I think I do prefer the way it's laid out on 18.1. Now, pausing in progress video now comes to 18.1. Previously, I think in 18.1 beta 3, this had not yet been migrated over from iOS 18 release candidate. So here you can see what this does, allows you basically to perform jump cuts. So to pause in progress video and then resume it within the same file. So say you're at a baseball game and the umpire is talking and you don't want to record all of that, but you don't want to break up into a whole bunch of different videos. Well, you can just record your kid's baseball game and then pause it when there's some downtime and then resume it. So that can just make it easier to edit, I guess, or just less editing. Uh, so here's the jump cuts that you get when you play it back. Personally, I love this feature. I'm gonna use it a lot. Now, here's another really cool thing. So on the Apple Watch, obviously there's no physical IO connection there. So to perform restores on your Apple Watch, what have you always done? You've done it wirelessly. Well, that same functionality is coming to the iPhone, starting with iPhone 16. So this is going to allow you to restore your nearby iPhone 16 with another iOS device wirelessly, as long as they're close together. So this is the interface you're gonna see. You're gonna, it's gonna ask you to enter a verification code that will appear on your other iPhone. You put that in to confirm. And once you do, it's gonna start restoring your iPhone. You wanna keep the iPhone in recovery mode, connected to power until it has restarted. And then that's pretty much it. All right, folks, there's a new spatial mode in the camera app on the iPhone 15 Pro. So this combines both spatial photos and videos under the same mode. So the iPhone 15 Pro has already been able to shoot spatial videos at 30 frames per second at 1080p, but now you can actually shoot spatial photos from the same interface and each spatial photo is about five megabytes. So like I said previously, when you went into the camera app, went into videos, you would see this little button right there. That's your, your spatial button to enable spatial video to shoot on your iPhone for the Apple Vision Pro or for viewing on the Apple Vision Pro. And yeah, you can actually pause and resume spatial videos now too. So if you go into your camera settings, go to formats on your iOS 18, iPhone 15 Pro, you'll notice this little option, spatial videos for Apple Vision Pro. So there's a toggle to enable or disable the spatial video button under the videos panel or videos mode in the camera app. But here on iOS 18.1 beta 4, you'll notice no such option exists. And that's because you no longer need to toggle it on or off. It has its own mode now. So you just swipe over to spatial, it's gonna ask you to put your phone in landscape mode, but you'll also notice this little button right here, this little toggle rather, and that little toggle switches between photos and videos. Now you may look at that and think back, if you're a longtime iPhone user, you may be thinking, hey, that looks similar to something I saw in the past. Yeah, iOS, I think it was iOS 4, had a similar little toggle just to switch between photos and videos within the camera app. So. It wasn't actually on that iPhone 2G, I don't believe, because I believe the iPhone 2G stopped at iPhone OS 3.1 or something like that. It never got iOS 4, in other words. But here with spatial videos, you can see me shooting a video here on the 18.1 beta 4 device, but then I can switch over to photos and shoot spatial photos just like that. Now here's what the spatial photos look like. You're not gonna really be able to tell a difference here on your phone. There are some indications that it is a spatial photo, but you're not gonna really see any differences until you view it on your Vision Pro. So this is the regular photo. I shot both of these at the same time because I wanted to compare what a regular photo looked like versus a spatial photo in Vision Pro. So you can see a little spatial option there or spatial indicator in the metadata. And then in the upper left hand corner, you can see it's spatial as well. Now you can edit these photos if you want to. However, once you go in and try to edit and try to save that edit, you're going to get a message that tells you, Hey, if you save these edits, you will not be able to view as a spatial photo on Apple vision pro. So basically editing a spatial photo deletes the depth data that is necessary to view it in spatial on the Apple Vision Pro and Vision OS. So that's something you have to decide. The cool thing you can save as a duplicate so you keep both photos, one with spatial information. Now, when you share a spatial video or photo, you'll see a little spatial icon in the bottom left-hand corner. So thanks to iOS 18.1 beta 4, you can now shoot native 
spatial photos with your iPhone, which is pretty cool, right? It can already do spatial videos with the iPhone 15 Pro, uh, but now you can shoot spatial photos within the same camera app. Uh, and that's a really nice thing because with Vision OS 2 on the Apple Vision Pro, you can now convert older photos to spatial photos. And that honestly is probably the best thing about Vision OS 2. It's the most impressive thing. I'm talking about being able to take photos that I've shot back in the 90s, right? And have them converted to spatial photos. And they look pretty impressive. Obviously the quality is not great, low megapixel count and all that, but I was still very much impressed by the quality of the spatial photos. So what I wanted to do so as soon as I heard about spatial photos being included in the 18.1 beta 4, I was keenly interested to see how those natively shot spatial photos would compare to photos that you converted in Apple Vision Pro or in Vision OS 2. So that's what I did. I took two photos of the same subject back to back, one with just the regular camera and one with the spatial photo camera, and I compared them within Vision OS 2. And while you do see a definite difference, especially with background detail and separation and depth detail, it wasn't as massive of a difference as I would have thought. So the first thing I noticed is that the native spatial photos that you take in iOS 18.1 beta 4, those look a little bit better because the background, especially there's more depth information it appears. And it's just, it does a better job of rendering the background in 3D space. Whereas the converted spatial photos, they still look super impressive, but the background is a little bit more blurry. There's a little less detail there, a little less depth information from what I can perceive. In my opinion, it just made the converted photos all that more impressive because they're not that far off from what we see with the native spatial photos, uh, courtesy of 18.1 beta 4. So I'm really curious on how the iPhone 16 Pro will perform when it comes to spatial photos. Okay, so we're starting a screen recording here. Okay, so here's the difference. So I just have this one example, but here you can see the example of a photo that I converted from a regular photo to a spatial photo. So here's how the photo actually looks right here. This is the photo that I shot yesterday, just of a flower. And if you hit the little spatial button there in the upper right hand or upper left hand corner, you'll see it convert like this. And now it makes that photo 3D. You're not going to be able to tell in this video or the screen recording, but trust me, it the, the flower is like popping out in my face, right? And you can see all of the leaves and everything. It looks very, very impressive. The one thing I did notice though, is that the background, like the stuff behind or in the background of the death map, it's not as clear. It's a little bit more blurry and indiscernible. Like you can still tell, tell there's, you're in like someone's yard, but someone's yard that needs to be <laughs> tended to. But uh, as you can see there, it is, um, it, it, it's just a little bit blurry, more blurry in the background. Now here's the NATO spatial photo. Now you can see the difference, like immediately. The, the background is way more discernible. You can tell what's going on there. You can see it's a spatial photo. Uh, everything, you can just see more detail, uh, individual blades of grass, things like that. And the foreground still gives you that nice pop. So I imagine that the iPhone 16 is gonna be an even bigger leap uh, as far as quality is concerned uh, when it comes to the background and foreground of spatial photos. So what about Apple Vision Pro and Apple Intelligence? Well, 9to5Mac found a reference to a generative AI model bundle specifically marked, as you can see right here in 301 with the Vision Pro model code, which indicates that Apple is at the very least researching and looking into Apple Intelligence for Vision Pro. And personally, I think that would be one of the most exciting applications for AI. Think about this, like being able to generate anything in 3D space using Apple intelligence. That would be wild. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. It helps others know that it's legit. And if you appreciated this video, I'm pretty sure you're going to like my iOS 18 deep dive with over a hundred new features. Plus Fernando breaks down everything about iPad OS 18. This is Jeff with nine to five Mac.